Third session, as we look at uh, transitions in pursuit of Christ. We established in the last session that in the journey towards conformity to Jesus Christ, God positions you under a leader to walk with you and bring you to maturity and inheritance. Okay? And we have established so far that maturity ideally is what? Conformity to the image of Christ. It's conforming to the Son of God. That's what maturity is about. Isn't it? It's becoming like Christ, attaining to Christ's likeness in every aspect. In faith, in motive, in thinking, in reasoning, in understanding, in speaking, in action. It's conforming to Christ in every way. And so it is very clear. God's way to bring you to maturity is to position you under a leader. Now, let me say a few things before we look at Elijah and Elisha today. Now, this appointed leader by God is divinely positioned by God in your life as God's representative. He is God's representative in your life, over your life. So, he's put there by God and positioned there by God as his representative. Very important to understand. He is a representative of the Father. Now, if he is, follow me, if he is a representative of the Father, what does that make him? A representative Father. All right? He is a representative of our high priest. What does that make him? A representative priest. So God gives you a representative Father, a representative priest in a man. You know, very interesting scripture again they are read. And it's very clear that you see, Jesus, when he multiplies this bread, does not go ahead to give to all the people, but he sent men to supply bread to the people. Talk to me. So if you don't want to be under the leadership or authority of any, then you, you might as well forget bread. These people could have said, I see Jesus with my own eyes, and they are right. They are seeing him. But they can't partake of the bread. They needed to be in an environment, sit down where he told them to sit down. Sit down and then that submission, then receive bread. All right? Very important. Now, this representative father and priest to you is one whose ways and doctrine should point you to Christ. Very important again. His ways. And doctrine should point you to Christ. His ways and doctrine. So you must be observant to see, to learn his ways. And also be keen to listen to and understand his doctrine. If the ways of that man do not point you to Christ, flee for your life. If the doctrine of that man does not point you to Christ. Flee for your life. Now that is not a God-given leader. Because he is not representing the Father. A God-given leader represents the Father. Amen? Amen? So let me read a few scriptures just to validate those thoughts. 1 Corinthians 4, 14 to 17. 1 Corinthians 4, 14 to 17. It says, I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children. As my beloved children, meaning what is a father, isn't it? As my beloved children, I warn you. So a father warns. For though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you do, yet you do not have many fathers. So there are instructors and there are fathers. And you must have the ability to design and distinguish the two. Between who is given to you by God as an instructor, who is given as a father. Therefore, 
verse 16, God verse 16 says, Therefore, I urge you, imitate me. For this reason I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord. Is that in your Bible? My beloved and faithful son in the Lord. Who will remind you of what? Talk to me. My ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. That looks very audacious for Paul to say. But remember, all scripture is and inspired by it's God breath. It's inspired by God. So he is, though he's writing in first person singular, yet he is not the man who is speaking. It is God giving his word. Talk to me. So this is God's word. And God is saying through the man. You have many instructors, but you have not many fathers. He's saying that a son should be beloved and faithful in the Lord. But he's saying something very audacious. He's saying he will remind you of my ways. In Christ. Look at 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and 2. The audacity of Paul here again. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and 2. He says, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the traditions just as I have delivered them to you. All right? These are traditions of the kingdom, not of men. As I've delivered them to you. Imitate me. Very strong word. 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have, heard from me. Are you following me? And the things that you have, heard from me, among many witnesses, do what? Commit these to faithful men will also will be able to teach others also philippians 2 19 to 22 philippians 2 19 to 22 it's good to allow the word of god the bible to speak for itself right yeah. but i trust in the lord jesus you there mm -hmm. philippians 2 19 to 22 but i trust in the lord jesus to send timothy to you shortly that i also may be encouraged that i when i know you are stay for I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. Read the next one. To go. But you know his proven character that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. You can't serve alone. Nor serve with the father. You serve under authority. One who can prove your character. We're together. Philippians 3, 17 to 18. Philippians 3, 17 to 18. Brethren, join in following my example. My goodness. Powerful, isn't it? Join in following my example. And note those who so walk. Read the next one. As you have asked for a pattern. A fathers, spiritual leaders are given for a pattern for when they walk of whom I've told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ so his ways his doctrine must point you to Christ Philippians 4 9 I didn't say 19 I said 9 I know we like Philippians 4 19 I said Philippians 4 9 everyone said 9, nine. the things want to go the, the things which you nine. learned and received and had and so where? In me. In me. These do. do. What happens next? And the God of peace will be with you. Listen. It's one thing to say and the peace of God will be with you. It's another thing to say and the God of peace will be with you. It's audacious. Say, I've been a father to you. So the things you've heard, learned, received, and so in me. In other words, if you are going to follow on, you must look to see. Observe their life. Amen? Amen. Study their life. Very important. And I could read you more and more. I could read 2 Timothy 3, 10 to 14. 2 Timothy 3, 10 to 
14. Look at verse 10. I'm going to jump a bit. Verse 10. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, man of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance. Let's jump to verse 14. Verse 14. But you must continue in the things which you have heard and learned and been assured of. Read the next one. No. Knowing from whom you have learned them. You know me, Paul. I mean, Timothy. So if you know me, then you believe the thing I have taught you. Isn't it? Very important. Don't just follow a man. Get to know the man. Look at his life. Study him. His life is doctrine. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as their children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. Offering an offering and sacrifice to God for sweet smelling aroma. The word imitate coming up and again there is the word mimetis. Alright? Which simply means to follow. To follow. Every son of God must learn to design and follow a spiritual leader. One who is Christocentric in his doctrine and manner of life. Amen? Every son of God should endeavor to mature, develop and, and develop a proven character. Every son of God should endeavor to mature and develop a proven character. Every son of God must labor to become a beloved and faithful son to a representative father. We see that in Paul. Every son of God ought to mature and build capacity to represent their father everywhere. Walk in his ways and become his expression. Is this in the New Testament only? It's all over in the Bible in the Old Testament as well. But allow me to just read one because I want to focus on the journey of Elisha and Elijah today. But allow me to look at Moses and Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua 1. Joshua 1. You, you could go all the way from 1 to 9. Let's, let's look at it quickly. See whether you read and jump. Are you there? It says in this is from verse 1. After the death of who? Moses who? The servant. the servant of the Lord. Amen. So it's okay. Even the servant of the Lord can die. It's in the Bible. It came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. See, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. How am I dealing with you, Joshua? According to, as I say to Moses. Moses, who led you? Moses was a father in Israel. Moses, whom you served. What I say to Moses, Joshua, that's what I'm dealing with you with. Verse 5. Verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Read the next one. So I'll be with you. What is God telling Joshua? You look at Moses. You studied Moses. You know the ways of Moses. You bear witness I was with Moses. Now that's how I'll be with you. To explain to you how I'll be with you, just look at how I was with Moses. You looked. You saw. Now that's how I'll be with you. Because Moses was given for an example to Joshua. Leaders are given for an example. Amen. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. For to these people you, Joshua shall divide as an inheritance the land I swore to their, their fathers to give them. You see, God had a promise with fathers. Now the sons are benefiting. You cannot rule out fathers and sons in the scriptures. Verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do what? Come on, somebody read. According to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Now that sounds very interesting. Is the Lord speaking to Joshua? 
He said, observe to do what I will command you. No, no. He said, that which my servant Moses commanded you. He led you. The things I told him are the things he told you. The things he told you, just do that. Just do that. Do not turn from it to the right or to the yes. left. The next one, that you may trust wherever you go. Can you believe it? What a trust. What I gave to Moses, he gave to you. You keep that, you will prosper. We still have a problem believing the word that is given to us by those that God has set over us. And you could go and do and read more all the way to verse 9 and see the promises that God is giving there. So God instructs Joshua to follow and to keep the word that Moses taught him. Listen, you have to have someone who will teach you so that you have the word to keep. If you are not taught, which word do you keep then? You must be taught. Look at your neighbor, tell them you have to be taught. A father is given to you by God for instructions and as an example. He is given to do two things. Now follow me. He's to three things. A father is given to do three things. To teach you God's word and ways. Teach you God's word and ways. Number two, to model the ways of God to you. Teach you God's word, model God's ways to you, and then thirdly, become a living example of Christ-likeness for you to imitate. That's a tough job, don't you think so? It's to build it by the word. Amen.